In this lesson, we're going to start with the home screen and show you around the iPad. As you rotate your iPad, the screen will rotate also. This is the home screen, and as you see, there are many different apps on the iPad to begin with. This is the default screen you will see after you set up your iPad. On the bottom are four of the apps we will be talking about today. They are Safari, Mail, Photos, and Music. When you dock an app on the bottom, they will be on every screen. You can make up to 11 different screens with your different apps. If you choose to place something different on the dock, you can. Some people want to place an app that you use frequently. We will go through that later. Anytime you want to return to the home default screen, you just need to press on your home button. To move between screens, you swipe your finger to the left and to the right. Watch how this is done on the screen now. Unlike traditional computers and laptops where you open programs, surf the web, watch movies, and enter text with a mouse and a keyboard, the iPad is much simpler. Everything is done with a tap or a swipe of your finger. It's much like using a smartphone. To open an app on your iPad, or choose a field to type in, or open a link on the website, you just have to tap. Tapping on the notes brings up the note card where you can type. Anytime you hit your home button, it returns you to the home screen. You can tap on your settings to change settings for your iPad, which is something we'll do later. When you click on your Safari and open a web page or a document, you can increase and decrease the size of a page by either tapping twice or you can use a pinch method to reduce or enlarge a page. By using your thumb and pointer finger, you either pinch or open your fingers while touching the screen to increase and decrease your screen. To move a page, you can press your finger to the screen and then you can drag it to the left, to the right, up or down. This is helpful when you are on a web page or you need to read a document. If you want to move to the top of the page quickly, you just need to tap the status bar on the iPad screen. The status bar is the bar that displays the time, your battery life, and the Wi-Fi connection. The iPad on-screen keyboard looks like this. The keyboard automatically appears when you are in an area that allows you to enter text, such as an address bar, email message, text message, or such. It will also appear if you are in a word processing document. To type, simply tap your finger on the key on the keyboard that you want to use. This keyboard works just like any other keyboard you use except it's on a screen. If you need to move your insertion point, you just tap on the screen where you want to start. If you want to type numbers or symbols, you press this key. It will change your keyboard to numbers and symbols. If you need even more symbols, you press on this key. To return to the letters, you press the ABC key. Some of the keys have different variations of the same key. If you press and hold on a key, you will see that there is a different variation of it. You can slide your fingers up and over, left or right, and when you get to the symbol you want, you release your finger. The shift key is used just like any other keyboard. The keyboard will automatically capitalize the first word in a sentence or list. You will need to deselect the shift key to type a lowercase letter at the beginning of a sentence or list. To make all caps, you double tap the shift key. To turn off that feature, you tap it once again. The symbol that looks like a keyboard will hide your keyboard when you don't need it. Just tap on it.
You can select, cut, and copy text on the iPad also. It is just a little different. To use this feature, you will press your finger down and hold it on the iPad over the text. This will select a word by a touch and a release, and you will see handlebars. You can drag those handlebars to highlight what you want. Then above that, you will see a copy feature. Tap on it, and it will copy the area that is highlighted. You can then paste it into a Word document or a note, wherever you need it. Watch the demonstration. Using the same technique, you can find the definition of a word. Highlight the word the same way, and when you lift your finger, it gives you a choice to copy or define. But before you can do that, you'll have to download a dictionary. Click on Manage and touch the cloud icon to begin the download of your choice. You can then touch the word and hit Define, and you will see the definition. This is mainly for websites. If you are using a search box or working within an editable document such as email or a Word document, you press your finger down just like you would in the last section to select it. Select all to select all of the text. Hit select to select just a word. You can copy or cut it. Cut it will remove and place it on the clipboard. Remember, cut removes the text to the clipboard. Copy makes a copy of the text. Then you can paste either one where you need them. To paste text or images that you have copied or cut, you just tap the spot where you want to paste until you see the word paste. Tap on paste and it'll paste it to that area. In the last section, we showed you the docked items. They are Safari, Mail, Photos, and Music. You can change this for instant access to the apps you most frequently use. To add the icons to the dock, you touch the app you want to move. Touch and hold on the icon until all the apps begin to wiggle. Now using your finger, simply drag the app icon to the dock, then lift your finger. This will place it on the dock. You can place up to six different icons on your dock. Touch the home button to stop the wiggle. We learned that you can have up to 11 home screens on your iPad to store icons for all your apps. However, having that many home screens could be a little overwhelming when searching for an app. For that reason, you can create folders that will hold several icons. Creating folders will save you space on your home screen. To create a folder, tap and hold on an icon until the icon wiggles, just like before. Now, instead of dragging the icon to the dock, you will drag and drop it on top of another app. It's a good thing to think about the organization of the different apps. If they are books, you put them all in one folder, or games can go into another folder. When you do this, the iPad will suggest a name for the folder. You can keep this or change it. Just remember to type a name that will mean something to you so you can find the apps quickly. Tap the home button to stop the wiggling and you will see your folder. Hit the home button again to go back to the home screen. To add apps to the folder, touch and hold to make them wiggle. Then slide that app into the same folder. Don't worry, if you do forget where you stored your app, you can find it quickly with a search feature on the iPad. Just swipe down on the front screen and a search bar will appear. Type the name of the app in there, and the iPad will suggest which app, and you can just tap on it, and it will open.
As you can see, the iPad is a touch screen, and there may be times that you'll want to lock the screen. This way, an application won't start accidentally. You can also set it up to, to lock automatically. To lock your iPad, you will have to tap the on off button on the exterior of the iPad. Don't hold it down because it will power it off. Just press and release. Once you do this, the iPad will go dark and it'll be in sleep mode. Touch the home button and you will see this. To unlock the screen, you will use your finger to swipe across the screen. You can also print using the iPad by using the built-in wireless printing capabilities found in iOS 4.2 or higher, or by using a third-party app. You can print photos, emails, web pages, etc. To print, tap the arrow or a toolbar key at the top of a page or an email and select print. If you haven't printed yet, you may have to set up a printer. You cannot hook a printer to the iPad, so the printer would have to be wireless, and it has to be on your network. Tap Select Printer, and any printer that is on the same network will appear, and you can select the printer you want. Third-party printing apps will give you more printing options, and we'll search for those printing apps later.